Did you know that riding and running all year round without proper recovery could lead to dead legs, mental fatigue, and overtraining symptoms? Hey everyone, welcome to Trail Sage, and this week we're talking about taking breaks. And no, I'm not talking about taking a day or two off here and there. I'm talking about two to three weeks of complete rest with no activities. But why is it important to take these long breaks? And for that matter, what's the difference between recovery and light days, taking a day or two off, and extended breaks? To help answer these questions, I've asked Steph from Safe Motions to join me. Hey, Steph. Steph? You there? Hey, hey, Sage. I'm uh, sorry about that. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no problem. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how long you've been doing this? I'm an osteopath in the European sense, which means I'm not a physician. I work in a hospital and I treat musculoskeletal injuries, back pains, neck pains, migraines, and all sorts of other uh, ailments. I'm also a personal trainer and a former running coach, and I've been in the health and fitness industry for roughly over 12 years. That's awesome, Steph. So I have a few questions here I'd love to pick your brain about. Yeah, fire away. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> You know, I do a lot of things because someone either told me about it or it just felt like the right thing to do. But if I'm being completely honest, I'm not really sure I understand why I do those things or what's actually happening inside my body. So let's start at the beginning. Regarding breaks, can you tell us what a basic training plan should look like? Yeah, absolutely. As you know, it's really important to take breaks as the human body goes through different cycles. Oh my God, I know exactly what you mean. I go through a ton of cycles and accessories every year. Sorry. Anyway. The body goes through natural cycles. For example, we're active during the day and then we go to sleep at night. Or we work all year long and we take a break for the holidays. It's kind of a matter of survival, we need this. It's exactly the same when we design a training program. Every week it's reasonable to take at least one day rest. A cycle of four to six weeks would usually have one week recovery. A recovery week is usually lower volume or lower intensity, depending on your beliefs. There will be a race season and an off season. And that last one is one of the biggest training mistakes I see. If you book yourself races throughout the year, it's not reasonable to ask your body to compete, let's say every two months, for example. Yeah. You just take one or two races, or a little bit more depending on your level, and plan to peak just during that period. And you save yourself a period of maybe two to six months of no racing. It doesn't mean no training, just no racing. During the off season, you can focus on strength, balance, form, technique, recovery, quality of movement, or just do completely different activities altogether. So what happens if you don't give yourself enough time off throughout the year? So if you don't give yourself enough time off, then what you're risking is an exercise burnout. We also call it the very scary overtraining. Mm. That's a form of fatigue where your body won't <sighs> respond to your command to exercise. That usually happens with lack of rest or recovery, accumulated stress with work, or personal life, sports, maybe an increase in your training load. Yeah, that, that's about it. So your brain is shutting down access to your limbs. It's not allowing you to use your body. But don't think that because it happens in your brain, all you need to do is push through and be mentally strong. The more you do that, the more your body will shut down. It's not the kind of battle that you can win by going head on. I can't stress this enough. The consequences could be devastating if you try to force yourself through overtraining. Wow, I didn't realize how much of a role the brain played. So what's actually happening inside of our body from a physical standpoint then? So as you accumulate physical and mental stress, your body will start to generate cortisol. It's a hormone that's designed to keep you alert. And as these levels of cortisol continue to rise, they start to disrupt the production of human growth hormones. Hormones? Hormones? Hormones. Hormones. HDH. Ah. HDH helps with the adaptation of a muscle to an exercise stimulus. It helps for recovery. It helps for muscle growth. So basically, less HDH, less muscle response, less muscle recovery, weaker disaster. And if despite that you continue to push on, you might be setting yourself up for some muscle tissue damage. In extreme cases, breakdown of muscle tissues into the bloodstream, rhabdomyolysis, and perhaps some stress fractures. You don't want any of those. Nope. So what are some signs that folks can look for if they're overtrained? Yeah, so if you've ever overtrained before, you know exactly how it feels. You feel sluggish on an easy day. It's the same day after day. Your legs just don't follow. You start to get frustrated and you feel like you're getting weaker and weaker. Mm. So I think I'm going to give you four things to look for that really mean take a break. You've recently increased your training load. You very recently had to push through most of your training. You're in a stressful period outside of work and your resting heart rate is increasing. 
You know, as a cyclist, I ran into this exact same problem when I got a bad case of the dead legs a few years ago. I was doing these like massive back-to-back -back rides without any kind of proper recovery and eventually it all caught up to me and it got to the point where I could no longer produce any kind of meaningful power. Uh -huh. So if someone else was going through something similar to this, how long of a break would you recommend taking? That's a really tough one to answer. It depends on how long you've been overtraining for. It also depends on genetics and your general health at the time of the burnout. Full rest and stress management are the best remedies. So for some, it might just be one week of recovery. For some others, it might take up to eight weeks. <laughs> eight weeks? You'll have to try throughout the years and your experience will tell you how long your body needs. So for example, after two weeks of rest, have you lost all of your gains? Then maybe that, that was too long. Or after two weeks, do you feel stressed still and fatigued? So maybe that's not enough. I think making sure you insert mini breaks throughout your year is a good practice. You can think of them as strategic deconditioning, where you reset your brain, your bones, and your muscles. So I think a lot of folks might be concerned with how much power or aerobic capacity they would lose if they took a long break. So what would you tell someone that might be wrestling with the idea of taking some extended time off? Well, in terms of the impact of your break in your fitness, there's no doubt you're going to lose some performance. <laughs> It's the principle of reversibility, which is French for use it or lose it. You will lose roughly 5% of your VO2 max every two weeks of break that you take, and your muscles will start to lose strength and volume. That actually sounds pretty horrible. Yeah, it does. But think about the alternative. Higher risk of injuries, potentially having to take eight weeks off because of overtraining. Secondly, there is a way that you could take advantage of that deconditioning. What? Starting off on fresh legs will allow you to benefit on sort of a beginner's improvement. We improve much faster as beginners. Once we get closer to our genetic potential, getting improvement gets harder and harder. So as you take a break, you step away from that genetic potential. It's kind of like taking a few steps back to pick up some momentum. So if you restart your exercise program and pick it up nice and slowly with a good strategy, the idea is that not only will you recover your previous performance, but that you'll also break any previous plateaus that you were stuck at. You know, speaking of resuming workouts, I have to tell you, I'm the absolute worst at taking it easy. I had just finished my two week break and I was getting ready for my first run and I was so excited that I went out too hard and then ended up having to take another break afterwards. <laughs> so for idiots like myself, how would you recommend returning to exercise? Yeah, after a break of two weeks, maybe try this. No high intensity interval workouts, reduce your volume of training by 50 to 70% of what you were doing right before the break, include strength training, balance training, get into good habits, warm up, stretching, fix asymmetries, fix form. Since your training volume is less, you'll have more time to work on all of these. After that, it's the usual, increment your training volume by no more than 10% per week, introduce a recovery week every four to six weeks, depending on what your body needs, and then after your first cycle. Cycle? Sorry, I like bikes. Start introducing some moderate intensity workouts. After that, you should be on the right track already. You could work towards reaching your peak performance within the following three months. After that, tiny break, do it again, off season, and then it's the year after. Thanks for all your help with all these questions, Steph. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out his channel at Safe Motions. I've often gone to his channel for advice and tips because he's extremely knowledgeable, but always delivers his message in a fun, unique way. I'll put a link to his channel in the description below. Thanks again, Steph. Thanks for having me. You know, as a fairly Dorsey active per plant of Steph? Plant. You, you kill the camera now. We got it. Dorsey it's good. Plant. You know, as a fairly active person, you might be wondering what I do during my extended break, but the answer is absolutely nothing. Admittedly, that first week is kind of tough, especially if the weather's nice. But I really try and focus on letting my body and mind heal. To avoid gaining any weight and to keep myself busy, I'll work in a few multi-day fasts here and there too. Well, that does it for this video. If you have any feedback or questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. And if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.